Hello everyone and welcome back to Star Trek Online, 23rd Century Campaign. Now, our next mission is Painful Omens. We are going to Deep Space K-13, which is apparently in the Deneva system. This trip won't take very long, so... There's not really all that much to talk about. Let's just enjoy the kind of colorful, starry uh, field that we have out here. There's a couple of players out here, too. Which is interesting. Do we have any items? No. I already took care of uh, ranking up and everything off camera. There we go, Deep Space K-13. Are we going to load the mission? Okay, good. I'll try to leave the voiceless dialogue options up for a little bit anyway. Federation ships seem to be attacking us, or at least going to. There we go. That takes care of the USS Myrmidon circle around and attack this pioneer class. Now you think this would be an even fight, but apparently we're just a better captain. maneuver and circle around him a bit. And boom, that's him. Now let's check out what's going on here and see why these Federation ships attacked us. Their weapons were at full power. came from the station. Well, I guess you better scan the station.
Well, we're currently at war with the Klingons, so I guess it could be them. No sign of Klingon or Romulan weapon fire, just Federation. Very odd. Oh, hello, medical officer. Stop where you are and turn about slowly. I need to determine if you are infected. Infected? With what? Neuroparasites. A life form last encountered by the crew of the Enterprise at Deneva Colony. Those possessed by the creatures tend to engage in hostilities with the uninfected. The better to render them fit for infestation. You know, the Enterprise seems to get all the bad luck and bring it back to the Federation with them. To Matt, and while you have not engaged in hostilities thus far, I have seen infected employ false passivity in order to lure unwary prey. A tricorder scan of your adrenaline levels should verify your status. A logical precaution. Being a Vulcan and all. Scans show a slightly elevated level of adrenaline, though nowhere near that of an infected life form. Thank you for your patience. One can never be too cautious where these parasites are concerned. Let's learn more about them. They are a life form that propagates by infiltrating the nervous system of a host creature. Through this neural link, they can compel their host to obey their bidding. They can also inflict extreme pain upon the host at will, and do so to discourage attempts at resistance. While effective, this punishment can lead to permanent neurological damage or death. At this time, most of the station personnel have become infected. While there is a possibility of uninfected survivors, I must warn that it is remote. Any recommendations then? According to Starfleet data files, the parasites can be safely destroyed by exposure to high-intensity ultraviolet light. My attempts at reconfiguring the station's lighting thus far have been unsuccessful. I am a physician, not a habitat engineer. Clever. As a precaution, I have developed a serum that can render a person toxic to the creatures. However, medical supplies here are limited. I have enough serum to inoculate your landing party and one other person. One other person? Okay. we we'll use the comms. This is the lieutenant. Oh, well, I guess that we should be called the captain, but our rank is still lieutenant. Now there's a voice I wasn't expecting. I take it you heard my distress call then. Well, in case you haven't noticed, the station's been overrun by neural parasites. The wee devils are back with a vengeance. Now, oh, Lieutenant Commander Scott, it's good to hear you from you again. Ah, uh, I'm afraid not. I'm in the artillery control room down on the engineering deck. The place is filthy with parasites, so you'll understand if I don't go out for a wee jaunt. Understood, Scotty. I have secured a small amount of security here. It may give you another edge against the parasites. Excellent, Ensign. You're with us. Okay. We got a bit of free gear. Uh, Tarsi can have one. And Scavern can have the other. Now. The Mark I phaser is always better than the regular phasers, like the standard issue ones. So we'll give Scavern one. I suppose we should have given Tarsi that, but actually Tarsi can have just her regular Type I phaser. Alright, let's try to get rid of these neural parasites. Oh, there's some of the crew. We may be able to gain useful knowledge by scanning one of the infected. Oh, there's a combat medic that's been infected. Can 
we scan one of you? Maybe combat has to be over. There we go, scan infected. The creatures continue to be resistant to tricorder scans, sir. It may be fascinating. I'm detecting an unusually high level of tachyons nearby. Based on these readings, it is possible that a temporal event has occurred on the station within the last 4.2 hours. A temporal event, huh? Yeah. That is fascinating. And a bit of a conclusion to jump to. Now, the parasites themselves tend to stick to the darker areas. Well, we came out of nowhere. And we have Ensign Hunter with us, too. station is down the hall to our right. I'm reading a single human life form within the room. The bio signs match those of Commander Scott in the Starfleet Medical Database. Let's not keep him waiting. Hi there. It's good to see a friendly face. Ah, uh, there you are. I was beginning to get a bit concerned. But you might have been taken by those little beasties. I'll just lock the door so none of them can get in while we discuss our next course of action. Now that you're here, we some work to do. The way I see it, we need to get to main engineering and turn on the station's ultraviolet lighting. That'll sort the nasty bugs out properly. Is that so, Tomet? While I cannot attest to the ability of UV light to sort deadly parasites, it will initiate a complete molecular breakdown within all parasites exposed to it. So, yes, in other words. She's a Vulcan, all right. I was trying to override the lighting controller from here. It looks like someone sabotaged several duotronic relays. We have to repair them if we're going to have any chance of saving the station. Before we go, grab yourself a kit from the crate there. It might come in handy. We'd better get a move on. The parasites aren't ones to loiter about. I'm glad you're with us, Scotty. Alright, let's grab a kit real quick. I probably won't be using this very often. Aye, this is one of the broken relays, right here. That one was easy. Just a few more to go. All right, there are several ways through the engineering section here. Keep in mind that the parasites tend to stay in dark corners. If you want to avoid it, do your best to stay in their gate areas. Thank you for the reminder, even though we're under attack currently. Now. These little puddles on the wall here are the parasites. We can't target them currently. Now, according to our little radar Remember, here, the parasites like the dark. We devils that they are. Yeah, there's the corridor is absolutely covered in them. Ah, uh, this one just needs new fences. Now, if we push 7, we can actually get rid of um, the parasites right away. Although, only once every 3 minutes. And that's because of our, I believe it's either stubborn or sure-footed talent. Or trait. And for some reason, these parasites can fly. Okay. Get a better look at the layout of this place. Usually, wherever there's enemies, there's a parasite.
Now this may be a bit tricky. Just a wee bit longer. Punch these lieutenants. There we are. Later on, hand-to-hand -hand combat is more of an exercise in futility than anything. Our odds of success are greatest if we remain in well-lit areas. Oh, Scavern's down. Now, if one of your uh, crew members goes down, you can revive them using the... I think it's called... called Cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Yep, there we go. Basically CPR. In fact, it is CPR. Although you're just kind of kneeling over them. Let's get Scotty over here. Okay, maybe that wasn't the correct one. Oh, okay, it's marked on our map. I'll have this fixed up straight away. That takes care of that. No trouble at all. That was no trouble at all. Alright, let's head to main engineering. No one seems to be here, so let's activate the lighting. Someone has overridden the command codes. You best get to the command center to see what you can do from there. I'll stay here, barricade the door, and keep trying to get those UV lights going. Okay, don't blow a power conduit, Scotty. Let's go through the Jeffrey's tube. Which seem to be little shortcuts throughout either a ship or a starbase. And we'll defeat the base commander. He's been infected as well. Now he's stunned temporarily because of that stasis beam, but it doesn't last long. And we'll activate the lighting using this console here. Apparently we're going to be attacked. Yeah, there we are. Let's try flanking them. Should get a bit of bonus damage. Oh, it didn't work. Alright, let's talk to Hunter. We need to talk. That's not a good time, Hunter. This may be a little difficult to absorb, but recent events may make it more plausible. I'm actually from the future. I can't tell you how far, just that it's a future worth protecting. That's why I'm here now. 
The aliens we're fighting are called the Nakul, and they're waging a temporal cold war with us. They're trying to change the timeline here in order to disrupt the future. Understand that I follow a temporal version of the Prime Directive. There's only so much I can reveal to you. Trust that we're doing the right thing here. Time's a factor. We need to stop the Nakul from obtaining the neural parasites. The Nakul ship that brought these invaders is now fighting the USS Ptolemy. Someone must have sent a distress call. Unfortunately, Ptolemy is no match for the Nakul. And neither is your ship, at least not alone. We should eliminate the parasites on the ships you fought earlier. Those crews will help you once their minds are their own again. It's risky, but it's our best shot here. Now, that is a lot of information to uh, absorb, but let's be back to the ship for now. Alright, let's help the Ptolemy. Close to you now. Use them to remotely access the computer on those disabled ships and emit an ultraviolet flash inside. Okay. I don't know why they can't do that. Please restore those ships and join the fight quickly. Not get it coming. Looks like everyone's coming around. The parasites are gone. This is Captain Duarte of the USS Myrmidon. What? What happened? What's going Your on? Your crew was taken over by neural parasites. Parasites? What? Okay. Sorry. We're right behind you, Captain. Lead the way. Okay, let's lead the way. Something's wrong. We're not doing any damage. The Ptolemy has been destroyed. They have some kind of temporal shielding. Temporal shielding? Never heard of it. But maybe a modular island. Now, the Nakul at this point, they're no joke. This is a close to a boss encounter that we'll face for quite some time. Now, they are matched to our level, but even when we're fully capable of defending ourselves against them, they are still no joke. Actually, I didn't quite want to have that much uh, maneuverability. As you can see, they're really hammering on our shields. Now, we're getting help from not only the station, but two uh, additional ships. They activated their evasive maneuvers, which, again, they just used to attack. Okay, let's get everyone off that station. Now, we're a pretty small ship, so I don't think we'll be able to evacuate too many, but hopefully there's not too many left on board. Scott here. The portal's collapsing. We're in for a right bumpy ride. Everyone 
Everyone's aboard. Get us clear before that portal blows. We missed some, it looks like. Perhaps not. After all, it was a temporal vortex. They may well survive. In another time. They may survive, but will they be prepared to survive? Well then, it's been quite a day, hasn't it? Neural parasites. Time traveling readers. Why, things will seem almost normal once I'm back on the Enterprise. Speaking of, I'm sure one of the ships here can give me a lift back to her now that they're parasite free. If Starfleet Command gives you any grief on this, remind them that lives are more valuable than equipment. And you saved a lot of lives today. Thanks, Scotty. I apologize for springing all of this on you at the last minute. And I'll explain more as soon as I can. For now, I can tell you that history is unfolding as it should, and that was not the end of K-13. You're building a fine tradition of making the right decisions in crisis situations. In the meantime, don't talk to anyone about the Nakul or their time travel. We can't risk any further corruption of the timeline. Okay, but we're gonna need some answers. Everything's getting back to normal. Except, you know, for poor old station K-13. Okay, let's report to Admiral Garrett. Hopefully we don't get in too much trouble. Let me get this straight. K-13, an entire space station, just disappeared into some type of spatial anomaly? <laughs> and I thought some of Kirk's after-action reports were a little out there. Starfleet Command won't be pleased with the loss of K-13, or the people that were still on board. But they'll be happy to hear about the lives you did save. Good work out there. Keep it up. All right. And we get to Met. You seemed a little cold, but that's just how Seriously? Vulcans seem to be. Alright, next episode is Return to Babel. We have a problem at Babel. Cord and Rebels have taken several Federation trade officials hostage, and they're threatening to kill them unless the UFP withdraws from the Cordon sector. I'd like you to work with the negotiation team and try to resolve this peacefully. Okay, and we get a bunch of goodies for that. Now, none of these officers that we can get are named, so we just basically pick our favorite. Now, I have something to discuss before we even leave. Oh, never mind. I think it's time for that explanation, I owe you. Thank you, Daniels. Now, if I'm not interrupted again... There's more to this mission than you realize, Captain. I speak too soon. Something's not right. I'll explain shortly. Okay, is that all? Okay, good. James Dewan sadly wasn't available to voice Scotty, but I think we got the next best thing. His son actually voices him. Now, he did a pretty good job. It's not THE Scotty, but as I said before, he did a pretty good job of it. And they actually got him to voice act everywhere where Scotty shows up. And we actually got a new power for, uh, ranking up to rank 7, Sensor Scan. It uh, reduces the damage resistance of them, and more to a minor point, it basically demolishes any stealth that the enemy is using, as well as giving us a bit of more of a chance to detect ships if they are stealth, and we didn't happen to catch them in the Sensor Scan. It's not that useful right now, but it becomes a lot better later on.
Now, just outside Babel, I'm going to end the episode. I just wanted to get uh, a bit of a chat in, since we didn't get much time to. <laughs> and we're going to end up being parked up beside the uh, USS Fugud, I guess. Okay, that's close enough. Alright, next time everyone, we will return to Babel.